Fantastic. Okay, yeah, quite a lot of you have already been to Nepal, so that's brilliant. I really hope that this uh, event today brings back some happy memories. And for the 68% of you who haven't been to Nepal before, I hope this is going to be a really insightful introduction yeah. to the country for you that's fantastic so i'm just going to run through the agenda really quickly so you know how things are going to happen and in what order i'm going to start off with a really quick introduction to practical action for those of you who are newcomers to the organization and then i'm going to pass over to the star of the show master chef finalist santosh who's going to be talking live to my colleague sanjeev in Kathmandu. And Sanjeev and I and our colleague Pravin are going to tell you a little bit about the impact of climate change on farmers in Nepal and about practical actions work there. You're going to be to one of the farmers we've already worked with in normal, rural Nepal, a bit of a tongue twister there, and another farmer who we hope to work with in the future. And you're going to get a behind the scenes insight, which is going to show you just how remote and isolated these parts of the world are. We're going to round up the event with a Q&A session. So I know some of you have emailed some questions through in advance. There's some really interesting ones there. If you have a question, please do pop it in the chat and select questions from the drop down. And we're going to try and get through as many as we possibly can um, at the end of the event. So Practical Action, we're an international development organisation. We were founded 50 years ago by radical economist and philosopher E.F. Schumacher. Now, Schumacher, you may have heard of him because he's most famous as the author of a book called Small is Beautiful. He believed in putting people and the planet ahead of economic growth. And nowadays, maybe that doesn't sound terribly radical, but 50 plus years ago, that was a really big deal. And it really set out Practical Action as a groundbreaking innovative kind of organization and it, that is a philosophy that still drives us now and in many ways it's one that's even more relevant today because when we're living in times of climate change and extreme weather, weather events the recent pandemic the idea of, of prioritizing people on the planet is um, still in many ways quite a quite a radical and very apt one practical action we work in asia africa and latin america so we have offices all over the world. I'm joining you today from our UK office in Warwickshire. And what do we do? Well, we help people find solutions to their biggest problems, their toughest challenges, which are often made worse by catastrophic climate change and also by persistent gender inequality. You're going to see a bit more about how that looks in practice later when we talk about our work in the Nepal. But right now, it is my pleasure to introduce you to my colleague Sanjeev in Nepal, who's with Chef Santosh Shah. Sanjeev, over to you. Thank you, Ruth. Hi, everybody. Yeah, I'm Sanjeev, and I'm from southern plains of Nepal, uh, from a district called Saptari, which is adjacent to uh, Shiraha district from where Chef Santosh Shah comes. Namaste, Santosh Ji. Welcome yeah. to the show, Namaste. and thank you so Namaste. much for joining us today. Yeah. Yeah. And let, let's start by asking a few questions because everybody is excited to hear from you about you and your inspiring journey from rural Nepal to MasterChef UK and the recent celebrity hood that you have uh, received right now. So without further ado, shall I ask, uh, start asking questions? Yeah, of course. I'm ready yeah. to answer and cooking anytime, you know, for the UK for sure. No? Um, yeah. I mean, all of the world, no problem, all of the yeah. world. So thank you, <laughs> yeah. Santoshi. Uh, you are so humble. Yeah. So first, let, uh, please tell uh, tell our audience about Shirha. Uh, what does it look like? What sort of topography is that place? And I mean, like, how did you uh, grow up in Shirha? How was your childhood like? There are so many questions, I guess, but I mean, like, please. So I already uh, share my story uh, via all the social media and all the news and even uh, MasterChef BBC where I belong from and what I have. So uh, I'm, I'm belong from a very small village, very near from uh, Sanjeev. So you know uh, everything there. And um, the village, you know, 2010, I have, we have electricity in my village. So uh, can you imagine, you know, 2010, we had electricity and then now coming uh, college and university in this everything. So I grown up uh, from that part and I, I was, I was uh, amazed. Um, the practical action uh, was working before, uh, like 10, 15 years ago, you know, they uh, doing like the way, way where I belong from, 
they have we have a river called Kamala, Kamala Nadi. So we, in a raining season, always we have a flood, and we people, uh, so many people die because of the flood coming in the blaze, and they uh, swipe the blaze all. So now the practical action they set up the um, meter, meter yeah like um, i don't know how what is the, um, the name of that um, device in a practical yeah, way but uh, so that's amazing things we, we are doing you know yeah. Yeah. thank you Santuzi, for I mean, like, highlighting our work so we have an early warning system in the river and before the river a flood comes in the river we can inform the communities about the incoming flood so that they can evacuate but I mean, let's get back to your, I mean, like personal life rather than talking about practical action right now. So, yeah, please tell us a little bit about your family. So, five brother and two sister. I'm, I'm the youngest one. So you're uh, the seventh one. Yes, I am the seventh one. Very small family, you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can imagine so, that. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I mean, like, we heard a lot of stories about you from, I mean, a lot many social media channels, as you said, and from a lot many, I mean, like, newspapers and articles out here in Nepal. Uh, can you please tell us, I mean, like, why did you leave Nepal and uh, went to India? So, I, as I mentioned before, you know, um, uh, we are, like, uh, Nepal have, uh, like, so many communities, uh, poor communities. So, my community is also one of them. And uh, because of uh, poorness, we left uh, Nepal. Uh, Nepal is so beautiful country. Who want to live outside of Nepal? No, I don't think no one Nepalis want to go out of Nepal. But uh, the situation we have is still uh, we have the same situation in many family. So um, belong to poor family that made me to go um, India uh, for a work purpose and then start my career. In India, and now I'm still in the same jacket from 20 years now. Thank you, thank you so much yeah. for being so humble. There now, and, Zoom client, and let me in. Yeah, uh, please. Uh, yeah, I guess there is a microphone on. So, uh, can you please uh, I mean, like uh, switch up your microphone if it's on? So, yeah, Santoshi. So, we were talking about I mean, like uh, how you went to India for work, and can you please tell us a little bit about I mean, like. How were you attracted to cooking? I mean, you cook such delicious food right now, but how were you attracted to cooking? Now became a pa passion, but when I left my village, I don't know what to do. So I started as a kitchen porter there, and then I, I got my enlightenment about the cooking when I see there. So uh, all, I think 99% Nepalese, either male or female, or sister or mother or father, everybody knows to, how to cook, you know. So that's like a, we are born with the um, talent, you know, one kind of super talent. Yeah. We, everybody we know to cook. So this is a very good, you know, we don't need to go college and university to go <laughs> and learn the cooking. If you learn, it's very nice. But that, that's how I get enlightened about the cooking. And um, India, when I was working in a hotel and uh, I see the so much potential in a, like a growing up, uh, as a chef, and um, I, now you can see, I found I, I was in yeah. a master chef. I was cooking and everything. So I, I seen long time ago this potential. So that's where I got passion. I got my work. I got everything by cooking. So yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. And now a little bit for our, I mean, like uh, uh, friends from UK. Yeah. So how did you get from India to UK? Uh, how, how come this happened? So. All the chef, uh, chef hotel industries, and the chef restaurant industry. So every chef have a dream to go London and work because the, the London have a food culture, the food hub, and uh, London and England have so much respect about the chef cooking and everything. And uh, I want to learn something new and grow up, grow uh, as a chef, uh, as a skilled. So that's how I decided to go London and uh, I apply uh, with the loss of various uh, people and then I got finally to get a chance to go to London and now I'm 10 years working in London. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And please tell us a little bit about uh, I mean, like how uh, you got into MasterChef and if there were like any funny incidents uh, during your MasterChef competition, can you please share it with uh, our friends? So, yeah. But, uh, MasterChef is very uh, a good competition, very prestigious competition in uh, ProChef in the UK. And I wanted to, I was preparing for MasterChef almost five years uh, oh. to participate there. I've been a National Chef of the Year as well. I was a finalist in 2018 as well in, in their competition. So I've been in so many competitions. 
my master's simple, this is the first time I went. And um, I, I wanted to show my country food, Nepalese food and Nepal food. So that's um, make me to go and uh, that's the BBC um, master chef and showing in the BBC. So that will be wi um, wide audience to see my Nepalese food and my Nepalese culture, my Nepalese, um, everything about Nepal. So that's why I decided to go master chef. And the funny incident um, there, there, there was so much funny incident, you know, so much, there, there was so much fun. So one incident was like, um, the Greg Wells, Greg Wells, so he always joke, you know, he's a very funny, the, the one is Monica, Monica Galetti, one is Mark Kashwening and Greg Wells, so he, he's very funny, so what did, and I'm very poor to understand the celebrity name in UK, I don't know many, only the chef and everything, so when I, when I was just standing for the result and he said, uh, Greg say, some name, say your eyes look like him, you know, like, I don't know, I say, and I, I was joking every time. I said, I don't know. So everybody laughed, you know that, right? So what was the funny name? Like, no. And I say, you don't know him. I don't know, I forget the name, what it was the name, still I don't know him. No. So I say, no, and again, people laugh. So I say, I don't know. So he was saying some very, very popular name. Every single people know, you know, I don't know his name. So, and I said, just now I must set up because I don't know. So that was a very, very funny moment. Still, I don't know who, who he was asking the name. That was, a, I was real and he, everybody laughing, you know. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. yeah that's so funny. Uh, yeah. And thank you, Santoshi, yeah. for uh, I'm like telling us that. And uh, one more thing, you talked, you showcased so many different Nepali food. And I'm like, did other competitors in the MasterChef, did they know about Nepali food earlier? And did they even know about Nepal? Uh, in the UK, yes. Everybody know about Nepal, I think, you know, because of the Gorkha, because of the Mount Everest, because of the beautiful country, because of the beautiful people. So everybody know about the Nepal, but people don't know about the Nepalese food. That was a very, very key, key point what I bring to UK and uh, Nepal uh, relationship, you know. So I... Uh, um, show them we do have a Nepalese food and uh, yeah. Indian food is very, very popular in UK. Very, 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 very popular. Everybody like and the spice and now yeah. uh, everybody want to eat Nepalese food, what I cook in a master chef. So yeah, the, that was a very, very amazing things I have yeah. done. Yeah. That, that's great. Yeah. Now, I mean, like, uh, apart from talking about master chef and everything, let's talk about uh, your hometown again. again. So uh, I mean, like, uh, can you tell us, I'm like, what sort of challenges do people from Sirha, your hometown, face, uh, and in terms of like climate change? So we still have so many things about the climate changing and get the difficulty from that. You know, so like a floating things. If I get example, the, because of the climate changing and the floating you have uh, from the river, the people, uh, the houses and everything get swipe up. And then you don't have a uh, farming or you don't have uh, uh, houses, you don't have everything there when the climate, so including climate uh, changing things and uh, like a globally this problem have. But in uh, Sirha, almost this all three reason we have uh, this problem. So yeah, and uh, we are getting support from uh, lots of charities and everything. So hopefully we'll be uh, getting more uh, in different level that things yeah. You know, right? yeah thank you santoshi and i mean like can you tell us i mean like you already talked about the early warning system that uh, we installed in kamala river which is only 15 minutes walk from your village but can you tell us i mean like uh, uh, yeah, how important uh, is the work that we are doing for the poor people and farmers uh, in villages like sirha and in other districts in nepal I think it's, um, it's very important and uh, whoever uh, listening these things, uh, no, it little help make big difference uh, for poor people in farmers. And I always support farmers you know, from my bottom of heart. So always um, I help farmers and uh, the, the, in this visit um, uh, in Nepal, um, I will be focusing in how I can utilize that farmer things, you know, buying things, making something here, amazing recipes, maybe some pickle or some anything and sending to UK and selling there, you know. So I will be, the whole motto will be to um, helping farmers and everything. 
and uh, for the poor people i always help and whatever they get help from the inspiration and everything so if you see in the master chef that's a one one kind of help as well so i was uh, telling every time i was very poor in uh, young age i was very poor in this one so everybody is not lucky like me and going in india you have a job and then you are getting the right direction and you are here now this in this stage so i, I always help people I'll always inspire people and i will i will be doing this continue as uh, um, long i can yeah uh, thank you santosh ji i mean like we are so inspired by your humility and the good work that you are doing right now for uh, i mean like farmers uh, from nepal and now I, mean, I guess we have a lot of questions for you but we'll come back to you later but right now i would like to hand over to ruth over to you ruth thank you thank you so much sanjeev and santosh brilliant to hear some more of your story santosh that's absolutely fantastic and we've got um yeah quite a few questions coming in and um, so we're going to have uh, some questions for you later and, and we'll be coming back to talk to you a little bit more and, and best of luck for, for with all your future ventures as well there's uh, so much exciting stuff going on for you at the moment that's great I just wanted to um, let you know, I know some of you have been having some sound issues, some problems um, being able to hear properly and the sound being on and off or having to um, leave the webinar and come back on. And also some of you have joined us slightly late. So there will, it is all being recorded and we will um, send you a link by email. So if you have missed anything, then please don't worry because um, you will be able to catch up on what you've missed later on. We'll email that out to you. So what we'd love to do now is to share with you a little bit about our work, Practical Actions work in Nepal. Sanjeev is going to tell you a little bit about the challenges that farmers in rural areas are facing, especially because of climate change. I know Sanjeev and Santosh have already touched on that a little bit already. And then um, you're going to be back with me and I'm going to talk you very briefly through our five point plan that we're going to be putting into action in some of the worst affected areas of Nepal with the support of the UK government. So Sanjeev, Tell us how climate change is affecting the farmers there. Yeah, thank you, Ruth. So uh, I guess I'm like uh, from the poll, we got to know that more than 30 percent of uh, you have been to Nepal. And you, obviously, you'll agree that Nepal is a beautiful country. And if you even Google uh, Nepal, you'll get to see so many beautiful mountains and I'm mean, like a world heritage site uh, temples uh, that pops out in Google. But Nepal is not only that. Uh, you'll see in next slide I, how difficult the situation is in Nepal. So, so in this slide, you are seeing a couple. They are going uh, to their field uh, with their cattle. The farmers there, I, they have a lot of problem. They don't have technical know-how. They don't have access to modern equipment. So the farming is, is still traditional. It's done still in traditional way and they don't have access to irrigation facilities, they don't have access to agriculture supplies, things like that. And on top of that, climate change is impacting them heavily. So next slide, please. And you can see the rugged terrain. Many places where we work, they don't have roads and people need to walk for around two or three hours, more than that, uh, to get to the nearest market. So they don't have access to market as well. And if they need to buy anything from the market, any agriculture supplies, they need to work for at least two or uh, three hours minimum. And if they need to sell their produce, they need to work for at least uh, two or three hours. So next slide, please. And here you can see a young woman, she's taking her produce to the market uh, in a wicker basket, which we call doku. And there's a little boy going to school. And the trails are like this only. So they need to go up and down the hill. It's really difficult. And in the next slide, you'll get to see I mean, some, some of the uh, trails, they are really treacherous. And it's really for, for small children and old people, it's really, really difficult to uh, travel through those treacherous trails. And there's, there's some sound in the background. And because of climate change, again, uh, we have not only erratic rainfall, we have landslides, we have floods and people have lot many problems uh, in terms of uh, agriculture as well and in terms of the daily life as well. Please, uh, another slide. And you can see uh, uh, the women, uh, they have I mean, like more problem than men because they need to do the household chores, 
take care of their babies and they need to uh, work in the farm as well. And they need to take all their produce to the market in the wicker baskets. And they, they need to bring all the agriculture supplies from the market because men literally, most of them, uh, they don't help the women to do the work. So all the drudgery it is compounded for uh, women farmers. And besides that, if you see in that slide, uh, I believe they need to walk through uh, rivers, which is uh, flooded sometimes. Uh, in the monsoon, monsoon season, it's flooded. And even in, in the uh, monsoon season, there's a lot of landslides. So if you go to the next slide, th th there you can see the landslide that happened when our team went to interview the community members to get their stories to all of you. So now uh, I'll hand over to uh, Ruth to talk about the five point plan, how we are trying to solve these problems for the farmers, how we are trying to help them. Over to you, Ruth. Thanks so much, Sanjeev. I think that really brings home the, the ruggedness of the terrain and just how isolated this part of the world is. And we're also experiencing the time difference as well, because I noticed it's gone dark since we started talking to you. It's only lunchtime here, but you're obviously uh, quite a bit ahead of us. And um, so what I'd like to do now is really quickly run you through Practical Action's five-point plan and this is a holistic package of solutions that we've already used with great success elsewhere in Nepal so we know it works. It's helping farmers adapt to the changing climate and not just survive but actually thrive. So we start with climate hardy seeds. So these are a specially selected selection of, of seeds. And our founder, Fritz Schumacher, I've already mentioned, he, uh, his book was called Small is Beautiful. You can't get much more small and beautiful than the humble seed, but this is the, the starting point. These special seeds grow better in the altered weather conditions. They're more resilient to drought and flood, and they crucially have a longer growing period. So it means that farmers can rely on a harvest all year round and can plan ahead better. They're also affordable. So they're really the, the starting point. And of of course, seeds need water. So the next part of the plan is irrigation, but not just any irrigation, and um, planet-friendly irrigation, which is solar powered. So using renewable energy in the form of sunlight to bring up groundwater from deep underground. And um, we've heard how climate change is, is causing droughts. That's just one of the extreme weathers that people are experiencing. Well, this sustainable source of water can provide uh, irrigation for crops all year round, even during the, the dry season and during drought periods. So even straight away, just these two things, seeds and water, how fundamental is that for a farmer? But um, they're not always plentiful or there or provided in, in a suitable way. So that's the start. We don't stop there though. This is backed up by practical training. So this means that farmers can make the most of those seeds and that irrigation and really maximize their productivity. And the training encompasses kind of practical farming techniques. So when to plant, how to predict weather patterns, for example, what tools to use really. And um, I suppose basic information, I don't know if any of you are gardeners, but you know, how deep to plant seeds and bulbs, that kind of thing. And also business skills, and this is really important. So it's all about maximizing what farmers can get for their produce at market. So which market to sell, which um, crops to, at which time and how often that kind of thing and basic marketing skills too and you know what training is also another part of what makes our projects and what makes this package of solutions sustainable because this is a really important part of what practical action does we want our solutions to work not just for years to come but for generations to come so we help people form cooperatives and share their knowledge and also pass that knowledge down to the next generation so there's a lot encompassed in, in that practical training part next up veggie cable cars so this is more renewable energy these little beauties they're powered by gravity and um, Sanjeev has shown you some of the incredibly rugged mountainous terrain that generally women are carrying these very very heavy loads up and down well these gravity powered veggie cable cars mean that they can get crops supplies farming stuff 
up and down those mountains in minutes, whereas it would have taken them hours. And this has two massive benefits. It saves them time. It means that potentially they can go to market more often and they can take more, more produce, more stuff to sell. And it also has massive, massive health benefits because people aren't lugging these incredibly heavy loads. From the, the photos you saw before, you can imagine the kind of um, health impact that that has on people. And last on your screen, but in many ways, the catalyst that makes everything else possible. This is empowering women. It's really the foundation stone that makes the whole package of solutions work. Sanjeev told you earlier about how women generally do the, the vast majority of manual labor on the farm in any case, but also an awful lot of men um, leave their, the rural areas and go abroad to find work. So women are often on their own. So all of the work falls to them. And at the same time as that, they're also responsible for looking after their children and elderly relatives and on top of that they also face discrimination so it's more difficult for them to get the knowledge and the resources that they need to make farming a success so we help them access those things we bring them together in cooperatives so that they can work together and support other people and the result of all this well farms are more productive and farmers are more successful they're healthier and they're better connected to each other and the outside world we really help them build a solid foundation to cope with the ongoing impact of climate change, but also with anything else that might come along. You saw a picture of the landslide. This is a part of the world where extreme weather events are common. And of course, we've had the effects of the ongoing pandemic as well. So unexpected things like that, the stronger their businesses are and their livelihoods are, the more able they are to cope with those things. And all of this wonderful work is being made possible by the support of our generous donors and the UK government. So the UK government is doubling donations to our Turn the Tables on Climate Change campaign until the 9th of March. And those donations matched by the UK government will be used to help farmers in West Nepal create bright, secure and successful futures using that five point plan we've just outlined. And we're incredibly proud and privileged to have the support of the UK government for this particular campaign. Pain. So now I'm going to go back to Sanji, who is joined by our colleague Prabin, and they're going to give you a really interesting little behind the scenes insight into what it took to meet the farmers we'll be working with in the future and to bring their stories to you. And this is another thing that shows just how isolated and remote these communities are. Sanjeev and Prabin, over to you. Yeah, so uh, thank you, Ruth. So before I'm showing you the video about a uh, behind the scenes video, uh, let me tell you a little bit about how we get to the communities and how we interview them, how we get their stories to all of you. So it, it's not easy all the time. So in case of Bangladesh, there was a terrorist attack. In case of Zimbabwe, there was an economic collapse. In case of Sudan, uh, there was civil unrest and th there was civil war as well. And in case of Kenya, there was election protest as well. But in case of Nepal, last October, the, the problem was much, much more difficult because there was lockdown and there was this coronavirus pandemic and there no international travel was permitted. Even domestic travel wasn't permitted. So you needed uh, two permissions from uh, two local governments, one from point of departure and one, one from the destination. And it was really impossible to get those to those districts because in between there are many districts and you, you need to have permission uh, to travel from one district to another district. And the three districts where we went to uh, get the stories, it's very far away, like around 500, more than 500 kilometers from Kathmandu, the capital city, where our office is right now. And besides that, we hadn't worked in that area at all. So it was completely new. That area was completely new to us. Uh, most of the areas where uh, we wanted to go, they didn't have internet access there. Uh, it was a real problem to communicate uh, with the team going there about what sort of uh, stories uh, sh shall we get and what sort of, sort of videos and photos shall we get from people uh, from those areas. And we couldn't get uh, the journalists as well. Nobody was willing to travel there. And there was an, another thing as well. It was monsoon season and it was raining, raining uh, throughout Nepal. And in most of the parts where we wanted to go there was all the roads were blocked by landslides so you'll get to see how we overcome those uh, problems uh, and uh, got all these inspiring stories 
of community members and farmers for all of you. So now I request to play the video so you'll get to see. So I guess uh, you saw how difficult it was to get to the farmers. We cannot bring the farmers uh, to you right now, but uh, Prabin, uh, my friend Prabin will tell you about uh, one of the farmers, uh, inspiring farmers whom we met uh, in Dang district. So over to you, um, Prabinji. Yeah, as you can see in the video, um, the trip wasn't an easy one. Um, it, was, it, was, it was really, really difficult, but, but our team, they did a fantastic job in you know going go, going there and then collect the stories and and meet uh, and then they met up with lots of really inspiring people who we're going to work in the future to turn the tables on climate change um i'd like you i'd like to introduce you to one of uh, one of uh, the people we met um uh, in our trip uh, to collect the content so her name is radhika pariyar she's 32 years old and uh, she has this amazing uh, backstory. Um, she was born in this um, low caste, uh, we call it Dalit. And then she was also caught up in this uh, Maoist uh, war. And, um, and, 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 and um, what do you call this? Um, she, she is this amazing character who is like, you know, uh, who is uh, also a local activist in her community. And, you know, our team, um, spoke with her and then she shared her life uh, about her life and you know how climate change is you know uh, affecting um, her and fellow farmers so uh, here's the video <laughs> समस्या चाहिँ छ त्यहाँ चाहिँ बाढी पहिरो अलि जोखिमै छ अनि एक महिना कृषि गरेर 6 महिना खाना पुराउने हाम्रो समुदाय हो के कमी हुनुहुन्छ विशेष त 3 महिना 6 महिना खाना पुग्ने आफ्नो जमिनबाट र बाकी समय इन्डिया कोही विदेश बस्नु भएको छ इन्डिया मजदुरी गरेर खानेहरुको जनसंख्या अलि बढी हाम्रो गाउँमा हाम्रो समाजमा चाहिँ छ हामी किनभने सबै घरमै हुनुहुन्छ घरमा भइसकेपछि त अब त्यो माटो नजोतेर के गर्नु हम इन्हें इंडिया जानू बंदा बोलो अपनो पांच कठह जगह जो दाखिले आमी स्वाभी मानी होना सब सो बन्ने खाल को चाहे बॉय दियो वाने पसारी वहाँ उन ले किर्सी में अपनो जीवन लाइब्रेरी तित गार्ना सकनो उनसा किर्सी बाटे अपनो जीवन साला उनसा सकनो उनसा बन्ने चाहे माले लाख सा हम एस यू कैन सी इन द वीडियो आई मीन वादिका सी स्पेंड हर life uh, uh, creating awareness in her community and then and then you know um, creating awareness on uh, women's uh, uh, women's rights and then you know caste-based discrimination and things like that and and even in her early days she was um, she, she went underground with the Maoist party um, to help them with with this um, caste-based discrimination issues and things like that and 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 you know she's like very much of an activist, and, and just recently she even um, um, ran for an, uh, for a local election, and she also made made made, made a song by herself where she can, uh, where she talked about her campaign and things like that, and on but unfortunate uh, unfortunately she lost the election, but 
however sees this woman with an with uh, with this amazing inspiration uh, story and she also has this vision of you know how we can deal with the farmers and uh, how we can tackle this climate change so here on um, the next video अब राजनीतिक जीवन पनि मेरो छ सामाजिक जीवन पनि छ म सामाजिक क्षेत्रमा अलिअलि महिला अधिकारको क्षेत्रमा पनि काम गर्ने गर्छु दलित अधिकारको क्षेत्रमा पनि म काम गर्ने गर्छु र अर्को कुरा चाहिँ महिलाहरूलाई आत्मनिर्भर बनाउन र कृषिमा जोड्नका लागि हामीले विशेष खालको कार्यक्रम लगेर त्यस्तो गाउँ बस्तीहरूमा विशेष खालको कार्यक्रम लगेर उहाँहरूलाई कुरा गर्न पाउँदा आफ्नो जीवनको कथा सुनाउन पाउँदा आफ्नो सङ्घर्षको कथा सुनाउन पाउँदा त खुसी नै छु Thanks so much, Pravin and Sanjay. That's brilliant. And um, I'm really sorry. I know that that video was a bit laggy. We've been experimenting over the last couple of days trying to get our videos to play smoothly, and we thought we'd cracked it, but I don't think we have quite. But the good news is, all of our videos you can find them on our website and also on our YouTube channel. So do have a look there and check those out. And um, yeah, so just sorry about the slight sort of uh, technical jerkiness going on there. But I hope you enjoyed meeting um, Radhika. She really is. She's such a charismatic. person and we're really excited to be working with her and her community and um, and to round out up this chat about practical actions work in Nepal we want to introduce you to one more Nepali farmer and this is someone we've already worked with using that same holistic package of solutions that I was talking to you about earlier and they've really been able to transform their life in the most incredible way so Sanjeev introduces us to tech thank you Ruth and now let me introduce you to tech uh who who is a successful farmer and how he has been successful i'll tell you about that so i have met tech many times when i went to the district called bajura which is a hilly district in western nepal and it's uh, again the same rugged terrain that we showed you earlier and what uh, we did for tech was uh, tech came from india after working for 20 years in india during the prime time of maoist insurgency uh, he didn't have any idea to do anything in nepal so we enrolled him in climate field school where he got to learn about uh, climate smart agriculture and improved farming practices besides that uh, we also established we also installed a water storage system for farmers like him so that they can irrigate their crops and their land and we also established some collection centers where uh, the farmers like him can go and sell their vegetable and like ruth was earlier showing you we installed a gravity powered uh, veggie cable car uh, in his area so people like him uh, they didn't need like two or three hours to go up and down with big load on their back to sell their produce so the time was reduced to one or two minutes so within two minutes they could get their uh, produce to the market and there was one interesting intervention as well uh, we managed to get some agrovet Uh, to their doorsteps who could uh, provide them with agriculture supplies like climate hardy seeds and all of the agriculture inputs so which made their life a little bit easier and they also got advice from uh, the agrovets about how to do farming in a better way in an advanced way so he turned into a commercial farmer he also got uh, a president award later and then uh, he became uh, a really professional farmer and he left all those farm to another farmer uh, who stayed in bajura who is continuing his legacy and he has now moved to southern plains of nepal and he has a huge banana plantation and a huge uh, vegetable farm as well so he's inspiring lot many farmers like him and many farmers uh, are taking him as role model and following his footsteps and we are really happy that uh, farmers like him they are uh, resilient to impacts of climate change and even during this coronavirus pandemic they didn't lose anything uh, they still could make their ends meet so which is a great thing for uh, people uh, who are depending on agriculture so yes uh, farmers like tech they are really happy and whenever i met with him he was always thankful to practical action Uh, and i mean like farmer like him uh, he has inspired lot many farmers like him so th- there's a kind of uh, um, movement agriculture movement in western nepal where many people they have started commercial farming vegetable farming and thanks to tech and people like him now over to you thank you 
Thanks so much, Sanji. Um, tech story is just such an amazing example of how someone can overcome what looked like an insurmountable challenge to not just thrive and make a brilliant livelihood for themselves, but to inspire other people as well. Amazing stuff. Thank you so much. I hope you've enjoyed getting a little bit closer to the communities that we work with. And we've now got just over 10 minutes for questions. So we've been collecting up your questions for Santosh and the team from your emails and from the chat. Thank you so much for sending them in. They're all brilliant. And we're probably not going to be able to get around to answering all of them, but we will do our best and we will follow up on them afterwards as well. So we'll make sure you've, uh, you've got an answer to your question. And so the first question we've got, it's for Santosh. And it is quite simply, what is your favorite recipe? Right. Oh my God, uh, that's not simple, uh, I think, uh, question, you know, that's a very difficult question. So I like, um, uh, in a MasterChef, I cook uh, hemp seed chutney. So now I like uh, so much that uh, uh, simple recipes and um, uh, that's my favorite now. And um, another is uh, six, six spice, six wonder spice, Nepalese six spice. That's the two recipes is my favorite. If anything come, then I will I will not have a new favorite recipe. So. Thanks so much, Santosh. And um, we've got another one for you as well, which is what opportunities has MasterChef opened up for you? Uh, there is just so many opportunity uh, MasterChef give me uh, after the MasterChef. Um, I always uh, help uh, farmers and others. So I came UK now. To, uh, sorry, I came to Nepal now to research about my book. So I'm doing my cookbook, Nepalese cookbook, uh, uh, recipes book. So I'm going to research what we have ingredients, what we have similar. So this opportunity, then we have uh, helping our farmers here, that's opportunity. So a lot, there is a so many door open uh, for me uh, after MasterChef. So yeah. And, and someone has asked what your brothers and sisters have, have done. Have they stayed in Nepal or have they gone on to have careers of their own do, doing different things? So uh, they left. Uh, my brother, uh, all brother, they left uh, when I was very young. So uh, one brother in Sinduli, one brother in Ramachap, one brother in the USA now, and one brother in you know, Mexico was Belich. He was a chef and he had a restaurant. But now two brothers come back in uh, my village and they're doing their own business now. They have a hotel and they have a restaurant now. And uh, my mother is staying with uh, my brother. So yeah, so two brothers here, one brother in um, USA, Boston, they are living. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so going back to the culinary side of things now, this might be a bit more difficult to answer than, than the one about the poorly cuisine, but which one UK dish would you pick to bring back to Nepal and to showcase? So people will be laugh, you know, are you going to, uh, if I saw the UK dish, the famous popular in UK, uh, to I want to show um, Nepalese people, we, uh, they eat similar to us in the UK. They eat look like our our recipe. They stole it, you know that. So that was like a black pudding, you know. So black pudding is we have a week um, um, in Nepal as well. We eat um, uh, we, uh, meat blood. Uh, we uh, sorted them and they eat. So I want to show a similar way we're making black pudding there. So I want to do, um, introduce in Nepal that so we can cook uh, in a similar way. So I just discovered like yesterday that things, we have a similar things in the uh, UK and Nepal. And also fish and chips for sure. <laughs> we have lots of fish, we have lots of potato. So we'll probably get help from the, uh, that um, recipe. So two things I will going to introduce to Nepal uh, from UK. <laughs> Brilliant. Thanks, Santosh. I think fish and chips is Prabhin's favourite UK dish as well. So you've got something in common there. And I'm a big fan of black pudding. So yeah, that all sounds good. And um, someone has asked you talk about um, Momo and vegetable tarly earlier, um, but we don't necessarily know in the UK what Momo is. Can you explain what that is? So that's a um, uh, dumpling you know very very popular uh, that dumpling uh, inspired from tibet and um, momos is more uh, famous and popular dish than uh, tibet 
So with that Momo, as you're going to find every single Nepalese restaurant in um, UK. And uh, in the, one of the best dishes we have, and everyday eating, people, uh, they can't survive without momos, you know, in Nepal. So uh, steamed dumpling, you can find in a buff meat, vegetable, and lamb, and uh, yeah, vegetable. So. I actually, yeah, I, I had a plan to, to visit Nepal. I was all booked in to come to Nepal and then uh, COVID hit. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to visiting at some point in the future future and, uh, and having some momos and uh, all the things you've talked about because it sounds amazing. Thanks so much Santosh. I've got a question now um, for the team in Nepal, for, for Sanjeev and, and Prabhan, and this one is about how COVID has affected our work, so our, our project work, um, what impact has COVID had there? So thank you Ruth. Uh, so earlier, because of COVID, uh, we went online and a lot of our project work in the ground, uh, they were affected because our uh, project officers, they couldn't visit the community members and the community members wouldn't allow anybody from outside. But right now, everything is normal. So all of our project officers, all of our field officers, they're in the field and we are visiting the communities uh, because the COVID has subsided down and we have now only around thousand active cases. So it's normal now, but in those days, it was really difficult. Uh, uh, we went uh, into online kind of workshops, online kind of uh, yeah. mentoring uh, the social mobilizers uh, who would visit uh, the community members and get our word to the community members. So it was like that. And how did communication work during that time? And then this is sort of linked to another question that someone's asked, which is, do you have mobile phone networks in the villages? Is that a, a common way of staying in touch? Um, so basically what we did was, you know, as Sanjeev just mentioned earlier, um, what we did was during the pandemic uh, time, what we did was we uh, hosted this online workshop uh, for our partners and staff so that, you know, they, they can go to the field and then you know they can maintain some sort of social distance and then collect our content stories and then get back to us and and you know nowadays they have like you know 3g 4g in almost all the places in nepal so like you know via internet they send us our uh, our content and basically like you know even though the entire country was in the lockdown uh, state we were still continuing our work uh, via this like online uh, via this uh, technology yeah Thanks, Robin. That's great. And um, now we've got quite a lot of interest in the gravity powered cable cars, the veggie cable cars that we've talked about quite a bit. So maybe you guys can elaborate a little bit on how these work. For example, someone has asked, how do they get back up to the top um, once they're down, which I, I can't really work out either. And also, um, how do they need much maintenance and, and who is it that maintains them? So basically, how does uh, the system works is, you know, it's 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 like gravity power uh, power uh, cable system. So basically, the load is like in you know, a one is to three uh, ratio. So you know, uh, if it's like in you know, a 10, 10 cases of of some uh, veg vegetables from uphill, then it's like uh, it's like uh, no, it's like uh, ten kg of uh, some goods uh, in in the lower station then it's like 30 kg of goods uh from the upper station so it's the ratio should be one to three so that like if you if you let it go then it just automatically like you know just like you know comes down and then like you know the stuff from um uh, lower station goes up so it works on on itself so it's it's it, it's it's just the gravity power so and and regarding the maintenance you know they have this community thing like you know who operates this uh, this entire this uh, gravity goods rope system so so you know they charge very minimum amount of fee which is um, it's like you know per per uh, per trip they charge around like 20 rupees which is like you know not not even like how many rupees it's like mean? 160 rupees equal to 1 pound yeah that's like you know less than like like one or two or five, ten, or ten, or ten, a piece, ten p, yeah, ten piece, yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's a minimum amount. So like you know they they collect that amount and then you know they have this some sort of like saving and and uh, maybe in uh, in the future you know if it breaks down then you know they take out that money and then they maintain on their own. So you know that's how how this grab the system works. Yeah. 
Fantastic. Thanks so much for that, guys. And just sort of going back in time a little bit, the, the 2015 um, earthquake in Nepal is something that, um, you know, we, we know a lot about in, in the UK and a lot of people remember that and hearing about it and the devastation that it caused. And um, what's been the impact of that? And more specifically, what is the, how, what is the work that we're doing to help people become more resilient to, to future earthquakes like that? So the earthquake, it was really devastating. More than 9,000 people died and thousands of houses collapsed down and even World Heritage sites, they collapsed down. We worked in uh, two or three different districts earlier. And after that, we again is, um, replicated the same work in other districts as well. So what we did was yeah, people needed all the construction materials. So we established uh, resource centers where they could aggregate all the construction materials and get those construction materials to people. And because we ordered in bulk, uh, it was cheaper for the communities to get all the construction materials. And we also worked uh, together with the government of Nepal with their codes. Uh, we abided by the codes uh, given by the government and we helped build houses rebuild houses for the communities uh, in many districts. So uh, it's uh, basically in the hilly districts, which were largely uh, affected by the earthquake. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sanjeev. Right, we've got two more questions left. One, two more questions. Um, we have one more for Santosh, and this is kind of related to climate change, but it's effect on, on food and on restaurants. So what effect is ch climate change having on the food we're serving at the table? Yeah, the food always combined, um, connected with the climate changes, like a season wise, you know. So if climate have a bad um, situation and global warming or anything, the food always get uh, affected. So farmer example, you have a, a like an earthquake at that time, you know, the sliding and everything. And then uh, you, the, if you have a sliding field, how are you going to grow the vegetable and anything? So many places they had a slider, sliding earthquake time as well and uh, raining season as well. So when you have a um, climate changing, when the raining start, the many field is like a swipe up, you know. So they, they, that affect uh, on a table as well. So uh, the, Nepal is like a very cl clim climate change uh, and challenge country in a, every way, in a snow way, like a, a or raining way or cold way or sunny way. If you if in sunny time, like a summer time, we like burn you. You know, so much like if you have a field, uh, like a rice field or anything, uh, and sunny time, if you not get rain, then you, the, all those fields get burned. All those fields get dried, the, all the rice field and everything. So it affects so much. The restaurant, the farmers, everyone defect, get affected. Thanks, Santosh. Yeah, it gives a really good overview of the fact that climate change is really affecting everything in Nepal, as it is all around the world, but it's um, it's clearly a country that's been so sort of catastrophically hit by it. And um, we have had quite a lot of uh, questions about seeds. I talked earlier about the climate adapted seeds that we use. We've had quite a few questions about what types of seeds they are and um, how they're used and whether they can be reused and collected year after year. Um, we have actually got a blog on our website with a whole load of information that it's, it's quite complex, but it goes into exactly how we use those seeds and what the climate adaptive seeds are. So if you're a seed person and you want to find out more about that, please do go onto the, the blog part of our website and take a look. And so we've got one more question now, but this is actually a question from me to you rather than the other way around. So this is just to finish us up. What I'd really like to know is, do you know more about rural Nepal now than you did at the start of this webinar? Please select yes or no from that drop down and um, hopefully, yeah, well, I won't, I won't bias your, uh, your choice, let's see. <laughs> Amazing. Well, that's fantastic news. I'm so glad that 98% of you have learned something new. 
And I hope you've enjoyed it as well. And that 2% of people, um, even if you haven't learned anything new, I hope, you've, I hope you've enjoyed our virtual trip to Nepal today. Thank you so much, Santosh, for taking the time out of what I know is an incredibly busy schedule to um, be with us today. We really appreciate it. Thank you to Sanjeev and Prabin from our Nepal team for your insights. And thank you as well to Balkosha and Tech for sharing their stories with us. If you've already supported our Turning the Tables on Climate Change campaign, thank you so much. And if you haven't, now is an amazing time to do so. And that's because, remember, the UK government will double your donation until the 9th of March. So it's an incredible opportunity to literally make twice the difference. You can donate on our website at practicalaction.org and you'll also find a whole bunch of inspiring stories, videos, behind the scenes content, all of the seeds information your heart could desire and lots of interviews and stories about the people we've met and the people we're working with in Nepal and around the world. Finally, we would love to know what you thought about this event. This has been quite a different, unique kind of event for us, so it's really important that we get your feedback. We're going to email you a feedback questionnaire. Please do complete it. It's so, so useful. And thank you for your time. At the end of the questionnaire, you'll be able to download a recipe that Sanjeev has rustled up just for this event, and it's based on a traditional dish from Santosh's hometown. And if you do make that and you're on social media, please take a photo and, and tag us on um, Facebook or Twitter or what have you so that we can see your creations. That would be amazing. Thank you once again. And to play us out, here's a video that captures the spirit of our work in Nepal. Thank you so much. Take care, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.